Hello, Moodoo folks. This is my second attempt at a big tab, a big window, whatever you want to call it. Because I see a lot of uh, people do have issues with uh, the shading tree. It can be a pain in the ass sometimes. And I wanted uh, a visual aid during the baking process. I think it's pretty much a must, a must have. I did make a quick, you know, tool for setting up your uh, object space normals, color ID map, ambient occlusion, um, map size, and padding. But again, there's no visual representation there at all. You have to do it all through the render. Which you can. So I decided to do something about it. And this is a quick preview, so I'll try to be brief. I should release this uh, sometime during the week, by the way. I'm just ironing out some little problems. It has crashed on me once this morning and I'm at this uh, since Tuesday last week and I had one alpha crash alpha output that was uh, yesterday as well funny enough as well and all it is pretty stable okay let's get down to it. Uh, there's my high poly low poly and here it is. And you'll see there are some changes to your model view. And this is one annoyance or error I find. It's good that I'm showing this off. Base material just gets changed to a darker color. That's the solution. Might I had a button for that. Again, this is uh, there are some oddities that need to be ironed out. So, what is it? What do you do with it? Here we go. Modo standard shader. That's your basic setup. What you get when you start a new scene in Modo. Object space normals. Ambient occlusion and the color ID map. And you can see they're pretty big at the minute, so these can be in future releases. If you want a big alpha map and stuff like that, I might add more options. Uh, your map size, self-explanatory, 5 by 5, 12, 1K, 2K, 4K and 8K if you ever need to go up that high. Padding. Your UV border padding when you're baking, 64, 32, and off. Self-explanatory. And this is geared towards game art. So keep that in mind. It could be, you know, I could add uh, functionality to it for just doing uh, modo bakes. If you're doing just um, high poly to low poly. That can be added later. And I've got, of course, create cage. Cage on and off. Wireframe. Ray GL view. This is how it's all being done. And I've actually found a simple way to view your high poly and your cage at the same time. Which is... Uh, which which actually was quite simple, which uh, is often the way. <coughs> so you know, with this you can set up. You can I'll show you it in a second. You can actually edit your cage while viewing your high poly with no problems at all. Um, what have we got here? This is uh, this is your wireframe. What you're seeing now. So I'll turn it off. I've got my verts on. Let's 
take it back up to 100. Uniform is white, color is black. And you've got the push tools. These all affect the cage. And you'll probably be wondering, well, why did you add the pole? It can be useful. And this is very useful for tra transforming uh, your cage. Instead of just, you know, pushing your cage out, you've got two other options. Bake from object to render outputs. And that's what you'll be using for object space normals and ambient occlusion and bake to render is the color ID still got the modo tools all here you can add whatever you want to these by the way and of course your uh, your tool uh, information here Render on, I'm just going around anti-clockwise and render off, handy for quick viewing. I put the uh, off button here so you know you don't have to keep going up to close it. Uh, view your normals of course and the infamous rounded edge shader. I've added this in because it's very handy. Definitely is. There are issues with it on 90 degrees, but um, it's still usable. So that's why I've uh, added it in here. Uh, render curves, definitely useful. And this toggles off the displacements in uh, Reggie L. Because when you're doing render curves and you make a curve here, I usually just use straight lines. It doesn't show up sometimes until you activate this. So you've got your render curves, radius, sides, render curve is polygons. And I've added here a little color tool for yeah, making your color ID maps. You just select and click and color ID big. Create some material. <coughs> I'll show you. Item properties, I've left it here. Diffuse amount is a hundred percent. This, if you're working on something like Quixel, I'm sure other programs are the same, you need the diffuse amount at 100% or your, your color ID maps won't work. Anti-aliasing should also be turned off. So you've got all your properties here at the bottom for everything, which is handy. UV view might be a bit small for some of you but it's handy if you're just doing slight adjustments the tools UV tools are here at the side if you if you need something uh, changed before you bake something slight you can do it this way and if you want to do major changes or you find this too small you just double click on your UVs and you get the nice little UV window open so let's get cracking. I'll do the cage first because this has been uh, an issue that you can't view your cage and your high poly at the same time. Well now you can. So I'm going to create a cage. One click. I'll just use the push function. No I won't. I'll actually show you the other functions. And I've got snap divert on. Which is can be a pain in the earth. There you go. So why would you want to use this? 
I think it's self explanatory why you would want to use this the pull function. Try it out for yourself. And you've got the transform. Again, self explanatory why you would want to use it. But for basic uh cage manipulation the push tool usually does the best job. So there you go, there's my cage. I'll just pull it right out here. So you can see what's going on. Simple. Only problem here is the backside is in complete darkness. Which can be resolved with uh, a dome light. And there you go, immediately you can see one of the problems I've been having. A dome light. Everything is gone. You, just, you can still select it. So if you go in the item mode, he's back. So I might actually um, work something into the macro where it, when you do change something, it, it automatically goes into item mode. So you just move your mouse and you can find it again. So you can see the dome light does cover everything, only it's uh, bad quality. It's very blocky. You can make it lighter by turning off the base material. So that is a solution, not a fantastic one. Would be better to add a, see, there he goes again. I think two directional lights would do it. And again, this material darkens everything. Make it lighter. Okay. We want to see the high poly now, don't we? Because now you're seeing the cage and the low poly. So, you click on your high poly. Turn off the visibility in your low poly. And there you go. There's your cage around your high poly. Fully editable. And now this is basically your low poly around your high poly. Again, fully editable. Wonderful. And if you change your Ray GL settings to full, you're going to get the gradient. I don't like it. You might. And fast. It means you're changing your whole background. So if you want to revert back to your original background, you just maximize the view. And there you go. I like this uh, background that I made. I just made it in Photoshop because it's, uh, it's a, r a perfect color and there's no gradient in it. It's just super smashing great. <laughs> So there you go, there's the, that was, you know, I don't think there's any simpler way to view a high poly and a cage than this. And again, if you go to colored, you've got black wireframe and black verts. And the job's a good one. Okay. I'll just turn off the cage. Object space normals. Boom. Mesh disappears. And there we are. If you've got the alpha I put on, you can't see it in Ray GL. And remember, you need the alpha I put for the padding. If you don't have your alpha output turned on, you won't get any padding. So, a little annoyance, if you want to call it that simple click of a mouse. Or you can click the object space normals again, but again, your mesh will disappear. Whew. Uh, cage, turn the cage back on. The same thing applies for um, 
in all the modes object space normals ambient occlusion color id which you don't really need you're not going to be baking down from a high poly turn off the visibility in your low poly and there you go done Cage on and off. So let me see. Okay, I'll show you the. Don't need the high poly for this. I'll turn the cage off. You can use the base material. You see the rounded edge coming on. I tend not to. I like to set up a material for it. It gives me an extra, how would you say it? More flexibility options. You can immediately see it's uh, it's working. And it's right at your uh, finger fingertips, so you don't have to go through everything and searching for it. It's just there. Um, and maybe go closer to the mic so you can hear me. Again, with the cage on, you can still see it. So that's a rounded edge uh, shader. Again, you have problems here if, the, if you've beveled this in, in the middle and you've got the 90 degrees on the inside, then you're going to get the the issue from the rounded edge shader. I'll just turn that off. Okay, I'll turn off the cage. And now, render curves. Fun with render curves. Go into vert mode. Select vert. Shift O. And there you have it. Again, on this side. Shift O. So if your mess has got more uh, polys in it, you can do fake geometry, fake whatever. I'll do one down in the middle. Why not? Okay, it looks a bit daft <laughs> at the minute, but you can. Turn the radius down to half that. Maybe just a little edge on it. If you're doing some sort of sci-fi corridor and you want some fake panels, you can do it this way easily. And if you want to go mental, but join a bit too much. Okay, uh, if you want to render as polys, then they do their split here. You can, and the sides. I just added that in for extra control. There will be times when you want to render as polys that you want the edge, you know, clean and straight. Uh, that's render with curves. If you find uh, that it doesn't show up, then you've got this option here. Toggle displacements for the GL. Even if it's on or off, it it still shows up. But sometimes when you add it, you, you add a render curve, it doesn't show up. If you click this, it will immediately. So we'll turn render curves. I won't actually I'll leave that on because there's one thing I just uh, was just actually noticing that yesterday. Is uh, if you go into ambient occlusion mode, ambient occlusion mode. Again, everything's going to disappear. And you have to turn off your alpha. This is another issue. You see, you get a nice, lovely, from the render curve in your AO. So I think you maybe uh, 
if you put two and two together, you can start to see something really, you know, useful in your AO maps. If you want to add some definition to them. Because it, it, you know, works, works well. And I'll just bevel, do a quick bevel here. So you can see that it actually does work. The way it should. So it's nice, you've got the uh, visual, accurate representation of your ambient occlusion bic before it happens. And again, your high poly. The only drawback is you have to keep switching the alpha on and off to see it. Um, back job to space normals. Again, the alpha has to go off. If you want to get rid of your render curves, by the way, you just clean up the mesh. Done. Select the high poly, down the low poly, now I've got the high poly in the background, low po this is your actual low poly, you can e edit it, and also edit your cage at the same time. Okay, what else? And of course the color ID. Again, alpha issue. You just select, click, done. Color ID, of course, you have to bake to render. No current UV map. This happens a lot in Moto, which is actually the reason why I've added this. UVs at the bottom. Even though the UVs are selected, it still says there's no UVs selected. So, big to render. Done. Uh, we'll just get rid of these. Uh, Back into object space normals. I'll do a quick pick. Remember, you want uh, your alpha on for your baking size, and then you're going to bake from object to render outputs. Uh, I'll turn on the gauge. And you can see now that the alpha has crashed. And there's no big border. I'll set it up to see maybe if I've been the cause of that. But I don't think so. I'm having issues with the alpha output. I think it's actually because it's being turned on turned off and on with the macro. It's just causing that. But again, um, I'm looking into it. I'll get to the bottom of it. The culprit. See, it's just, it's, uh, this is what happened. It's just recently it happened yesterday. It started happening yesterday. I don't actually know why. Somebody su suggested to turn on um, here. anti lesson. I added that option, by the way, for your color maps. You can turn it off. If you color ID maps, because you don't want colors blending, you want everything definite for the likes of the Quixel suit. And I'll do another big, see if it's uh, anything to do with anti and I don't think so. I think it's just crashed the alpha output. Oh, there you go. So that is it. 
solved. Live solutions. Brilliant. Super smashing great. Of course, uh, everything's set up, so when you go into your materials, render output, remap pixel values is there, color space is linear. And you can just save it out. I'm not actually sure if you have to change this LUT when you save out. I should actually try that. And we'll do a quick AO big. And I'm wondering, do you need a cage for AO? Because I haven't really been, I've been using X normal last year for ambient occlusion. And ambient occlusion in Modo is freaking brilliant. So it's just, uh, I'm going to have to do some tests on that. Uh, let's go to ambient occlusion. Of course, everything disappears. I'll keep the alpha on. Because you do want, um, you're told not to use alpha, and then you're told you do need to use alpha. So it's just things that I'm going to have to work out for myself. Uh, we'll do a quick bake. So baking from object to actually, we want to add some actual ambient occlusion in here. And again, folks, all your tools, Modo tools are here just to click away. And of course, you've got your hotkeys and your own scripts and stuff. So you can see there's no, because of the alphas on. And again, there's totally no ambient occlusion. So you can see, actually, there are some issues. I don't know why this isn't showing up. Let's see if it's uh, in the render view. Turn the alpha on. Nope. So again, this is all live. Let's see if we can bake it. And you've got the options to, so it does bake out, to change your uh, occlusion res. You can lower that or increase that. I thought it was handy just to have it in there. So it is actually working here. And the higher the res, of course, the slower your bake is. This is a 1k map. And these little problems there, I'll, I'll be... Yep, so you do get a border around there with the alpha. I will be trying to work out why these are happening. Because that should be showing the actual... There. And there we go. And again, I don't want this. It's too bright. If you're sitting at night in a dark room and you're looking at white, um, it's but this is bad for your eyes, in my opinion. So you just go to expand your, maximize your viewport, and you're done. So there's a few um, issues. Go back to Moodle that need to be ironed out. There you go, your beautiful high poly and your low poly gauge. If you turn your gauge off, you're actually editing your low poly around your high poly, which is nice. It's a visual aid. And folks, this is a, a wrap for me. I'm not going to rant on. For ages about that, you've seen it. You've seen what it can do. 
I, again, I'll, I'll post this this week sometime. You don't have to use it as a tab. I recommend that you do. You could, it depends how you work in Modo. If you just got, you know, if you're using your tab key on your keyboard that you just, you know, you've got your model and then you're switching over to your bake, you can, you can do it that way. Uh, item list, you can add your own tabs here. So it's to add your own scripts functionality here at the top as well. You know, so it's, uh, it is pretty flexible. And again, alpha bakes and stuff like that I will be adding here. These can be, this can be split in half. You know what I mean? So it is, uh, pretty flexible. That's a wrap, folks. Good luck. Bye-bye.